Welcome to 1000 Best TV. I show you the all new Triumph Speed Tripper RR here at Andalusia at the Ascari Race Circuit and on the winding roads. With its elegant round headlight, the Triumph Speed Triple RR looks like a distinguished gentleman racer. But even on the first straight, the noble piece pulls your arms out. The new motorcycle from Triumph is better approached with respect. We rode the new RR in November 2021 in Spain South. On the test ride, we started with a cool temperature country road ride and enjoyed the wild curves from the Ascari race circuit in the afternoon. The Super Sports bike is based on the Triumph Speed Triple RS naked bike and can be recognized by its distinctive front end and RR lettering. The name of the new motorcycle may be a bit confusing. On the one hand, the machine is based on the well-known and popular Speed Triple RS, the differences are minor, but the appearance of the motorcycle is completely different. It looks more refined and elegant and, in terms of seating position, naturally moves clearly in the direction of a Super Sports bike. The round headlight is a temptation to classify the bike as a retro sports bike. But you are wrong. The motorcycle has 180 HP and is closer to a current superbike than to a Triumph Thruxton RS. The ultra-modern three-cylinder unit delivers 125 Nm of torque at 9000 revs from the nearly 1200 cubic centimeters of displacement. The suspension is based on a fully adjustable and semi-active all-in system. According to Triumph, the motorcycle weighs 199 kilograms ready to ride. So even in terms of weight, the Nippy Racer is no retro iron, but a modern superbike. The visually striking differences to the RS naked bike can also be seen in figures. The handlebars sit 135 mm lower and 50 mm further forward than the straight handlebars of the naked bike. The seat height is 830 mm. The well-known good power unit from the naked bike impresses here in the same way. The engine is revvy and offers a linear and transparent power spectrum. Although the engine has little flywheel mass, it is still very civil and easy to control. On the other hand, it can also scream wildly and tenderly to the top. A great power unit which doesn't feel unreasonable and nasty in town despite the 180 HP when needed. The machine drives wonderfully quiet and harmonious and then develops the typical triple sound at higher speeds. The engine only has slight weaknesses at low revs during the transition from pushing and the load duty. A flaw that the motorcycle shares with many Euro 5 capable engines. But the complaining takes place on a very high level. The engine gives confidence and appears mechanically cleanly processed. There are no annoying noises or distracting details. The three-cylinder may be cutting edge, but it seems mature and feels comfortable in any situation. The engine shakes its 180 HP out of its sleeves via the revs. This only sounds a bit negative at first glance. The engine is easy to dose and can be moved harmoniously and easily in the rev range. However, the pull and revving are great and immediately catapult the bike vehemently forward when needed. Triumph has simply mastered the craft of motorcycle construction. No weaknesses are found in the clutch, transmission and gear shift, and a great deal of experience and love are put into the machine. The anti-hopping clutch is easy to operate and pleasant to control. The gears can be sorted wonderfully with the fluffy but precise quickshifter including blipper. The clutch lever can also be adjusted and thus always lies well in the hand. A mechanical cable clutch is used. In terms of finesse, the electronic driving aids are a tad below the level of the radical racetrack machines but they are more than worthy of a sporty motorcycle. The BS and traction control regulate depending on lean angle, and the wheelie control is also based on a MU gyro sensor technology, which makes power wheelies wonderfully smoothly controlled and easy to handle. The motorcycle is technically up to date in every aspect. After all, the Speed Triple has been completely redesigned for 2021, and the new engine will be the centerpiece of Triumph's future upper class. 
The aluminum twin tube frame with bolted rear frame and aluminum single sided swing arm are certainly responsible for the striking visual appearance. Needless to say, the electronic driving aids have been designed with precision in mind. ABS and traction control regulate depending on lean angle. A good quick shifter including blipper function is mounted and all the fine features are controlled via the 5 inches TFT color display. The front brake feels good in the hand, is adjustable in grip width but also in the gear ratio. The motorcycle comes with full LED lighting in the showroom. Especially from the front, the Speed Triple RR with the distinctive single headlight including daytime running lights makes a great appearance. The new motorcycle stands up well aerodynamically. The windshield is flat and compact in size. But the airflow is precise and you don't get any unpleasant turbulence. You are protected but not isolated and feel very comfortable up to a speed of 160k with a slightly ducked upper body. Even after a long day in the saddle, shoulders, neck and arms feel good. The seating position is not quite as radical as on the current Supersport bikes and also better resolved than on a Thruxton RS the bike feels very light and playful and the knee fit is very compact. On the country road everything was wonderful. On the track, it was a little hard to protect the body from the insane braking forces. With the thighs and knees one found less support than usual on super sport bikes and thus had to absorb more forces via the arms in the braking zones. But prospective buyers can assume that track days with the bike are a lot of fun and the handling, including ride comfort, is better than the ultra cool looks would suggest. The seat is well proportioned and upholstered for practical use. The knee angle can be described as tolerable. With larger shoes, you might get space problems with the left heel every now and then. During the test ride, the Triumph impressed with a really well-designed chassis. On the one hand, the bike is light and playful, but it does not show any nervous tendencies. Tight turns succeed just as easily as long and fast radii. You can tell that it was made for real life out there. Even at low revs, you can easily master tricky passages, and at the top, the pretty motorcycle becomes a very sporty machine. The straddle between comfort, handling and stability has been achieved very well thanks to the electronic chassis. The noble components do not allow themselves any weaknesses in any situation. It's nice to see that you get a high quality product for the money. The machine breaks brutally and remains stable on course thanks to great ABS and fine Olin's parts. Overall, the bike actually surprises in two ways. On the one hand, it rides more easily, comfortably and playfully than its extravagant looks would suggest. On the other hand, you can pull the cable really seriously with it on the racetrack and forget the retro look from the headlight very quickly. I am sure that many prospective buyers will feel the same way about this positive surprise. New is the electronic suspension from Olin's. Here one sets on the current 2.0 version which has already proven itself in other high-priced supersports. On the one hand, you have a mechanically high-quality and noble-looking solution on board. On the other hand, the electronic suspension better manages the balancing act between ride comfort and sporty precision. As is well known, the chassis is adjusted to the current driving condition while driving. The system gets access to the data of the IMU, lean angle, speed, gear, throttle position and brake data are thus known. The chassis can basically be delivered with a reasonably soft and accessible setup. In the braking zone, for example, the damping at the front is automatically turned down while the rear is made stiffer during acceleration. The algorithms behind this are of course much more complex, but the principles are clear. In every riding position, the suspension has the setup that the Olins and Triumph engineers consider correct, and the respective compromise is significantly smaller than before. If you don't want to trust this witchcraft, you can also operate the suspension in manual mode. Here, the suspension works exactly like a conventional mechanical suspension. This makes sense in a few situations, possibly on race tracks with a very simple layout including immaculate asphalt. But normal users rely on the three pre-installed setups and are wonderfully served by them. The bike has a good balance in both comfort and sport modes. So even in the comfortable setup, the line is hit and the tail does not sag. In sport mode, the bike becomes a tad nimbler in the turns and catches the apex just a little bit faster. On the Speed Triple RR sitting compared to the RS is more oriented towards the front wheel. So the handlebars are mounted lower and further forward. The footrests are mounted 15mm higher and 26mm further back. In addition, the fairing provides more stable aerodynamic conditions. 
the slim seat and tank combination have been retained and thus the entire motorcycle looks very compact and active even with fairing. Incidentally, the Speed Triple R is only one kilo heavier than the RS. The additional fairing and the electronic Olin's suspension do add weight. But the headlight is lighter than the double headlight of the RS and thus a total of only one kilogram is added to the scales. There is a lot of attention to detail in the Triumph Speed Triple 1200 RR on the one hand. The motorcycle is very beautiful, but also very fast and technically well made. Triumph has built here very high quality components on the other hand, but also shown a lot of feeling for the needs of motorcyclists. The bike rides playfully easy and you quickly gain confidence. On the other hand, it is an adrenaline dispenser and gives a lot of pleasure during sporty rides. An incomparable motorcycle which has no rivals. Noble, elegant, fast but still pleasant in daily use. A great enrichment.